So let's start from aggregate calculation in the alphabetical order. So what is this aggregate calculation? When we were to use this calculation? So if you want to identify a sum, average, minimum, or maximum, I also you can call it as upper limit, okay, minimum limit. You can choose this aggregate calculation, okay? For example, if you want to sum the number of hours worked by an employee, let's say you got a requirement and hourly employee also you want to create a time of plan for hourly employees. So the requirement says that if any employee completed 40 hours, then the employee is eligible, eligible for one day of leave. Okay, or else let's take oh, 40 is a very small number. Let's say 40 multiplied by 4. 160. 40, 40, 80, 160. Let's say if any employee completed 160 hours, okay, 160 hours, then the employee will get one day of leave. One day of time. We can call it time off. Now here, what you're doing. The number of hours working the employee, you are, you are grouping those numbers. You can simply call sum. You have to create a sum. Okay, consolidating all the numbers as 160. And a condition if an employee works greater than or equal to 160 hours, then that employee should get one day time off. So grouping or sum 160. Or taking an average, okay, or taking an average also, we can use to for aggregate calculations. So anytime if you got a requirement says that group the number of hours, group the number of days worked by an employee, or sum, or take the average number of hours worked by an employee, based on that you have to create a time of, you can go with aggregation. Okay, this is one. The second one is. Arithmetic, the quite common calculation in payroll and absence is arithmetic. So what is arithmetic calculations will do? This is for sum, okay? If you want to sum, or if you want to take a mean average, or if you want to take maximum number of hours or minimum number of hours, you can choose aggregate calculation. Okay. Arithmetic calculation. Multiply. If you want to multiply any value, subtract. Divide. and multi add or addition so if we got a requirement multiply subtract divide and add in simple proration logics okay in simple proration logics an example calculate fte prorations okay calculate fte prorations let me give an example if any employee if employee hired on first date of first date of the month and completes 30 days 30 days in the next upcoming month the employee will get one day time off okay employee who shall hired in first date of any month and completes 30 days, the employer will get one day time off. Okay, let's see the example where exactly this arithmetic calculation will come. If an employee high on second half of the month, means 16th, okay, 16th of the month, the employee should get four hours of leave. In the next upcoming month. Example 
let's say if an employee in the month of currently we are in the month of april if any employee join in the month of april first in may the employee will get one day off one day leave or one day time off if any employee joined 16th of april the employee will get four days the system has to identify and prorate the number in this scenarios if you got you have to work on you have to choose arithmetic calculation okay for proration logics you will multiply subtract divide etc so then the next one is build it the build it is also a calculation and this calculation will fetch the information related to date year month day date year month and day also you can fetch if you want so let's say uh what's the example you can take here mm. just thinking for example build it so if you want to allow a time off based on specific year month date or else let's say this one employee hide okay employee hide on 2019 first is holiday i'll just say taking an example 11 2019 and completes 90 days okay and who said complete 90 days let's assume once the employee has to complete one quarter then the employee will allow for three days of time off the condition is he has to complete 90 days we have a direct field but if you have any condition saying that on specific date on specific month on specific year plus 90 days Okay, so you have to extract the date, month, year. In such scenarios, you can go with build date calculation. Okay, you can go with build date calculation. Another example, you can also go with floating uh, holidays to identify. Floating holidays are not, not always constant, right? So we are, holidays are two types, floating and constant. Constant one is, for example, August 15th is constant value. August 15th is constant. Irrespective of every year, uh, every, uh, every, sorry, August 15th remains constant in 2019 or 2020 or 21. But some holidays will be deferred. For example, um, floating holidays, I can say, I'm just taking some example from uh, Sankranti we used to call Makar Sankranti. It will be floated. Or let's take Ramjan is a good example. Okay, it's not a fixed holiday. It's not a fixed holiday. So they will take the holiday whenever certain condition met. So those those kind of uh, holiday, those kind of time offs if you're creating, you can create this build date one. Okay. So what is floating holiday? What is constant holiday or fixed holiday in terms? We will see when you're creating the holiday calendar. For that, you can use build date calculation. The other one is my favorite one, conditional calculation. Conditional calculation itself, it says the name itself is saying condition. Okay, condition. This is like if statement. If statement. So here we will build a steps like A, B. And C. So these are the three statements I'm saying. Okay. The input again inside we have to create a calculation. If A met the requirement, okay. If A met the requirement, let's assume three days of vacation or three days of time off. So B met the uh, eligibility, then four days. C met the eligibility then five days. So if statement, if A, B or C, 
it is a kind of an R conditions. So if you have these kind of conditional related calculations or conditional related requirement, you can choose conditional calculations. Okay, example, calculations based on accrual, based on years of service. An employee complete one year of service can get five days of vacation hour, vacation time off. An employee who's ever completed, completes uh, three years of service, then the employee can get 10 days. So these are if statement. If employee completes one year, if employee completes three years, if employee complete five years. So whenever this kind of requirement, you have to choose conditional calculation. Okay. So if statement, simple. Next one is constant date calculation. It's almost similar to the build date. Build date, you have an option called YYMMDD, DDMMYY. MMDDYY. So in the format you can change. The other one is constant date calculation. A specific date based on specific date you want to allow an employee. Sorry, based on, based on specific date you want to calculate some time off. Okay, we can use this constant date calculations. Okay, uh, I'll give an example for this constant date. Whenever we're going go live in the absence management, let's say we are implementing absence management in the year of 2019. We are planning to go go live on by, um, let's say August, we're planning to go go live on August 2019. So historical data is also there for the workers, right? Historical data. So while loading the balances, we can use this constant date. Or else you want to create a condition saying that, Employees, okay, employees can avail time off from the month of August, sorry, from 0108-2019. Assume this is a goal of date. And you want to allow the employees to request time off only on this date. If you're not giving a date constant, what will happen? Employee can take the leave in the past date also. But that is not correct. We are going go live on 1-8-2019. So that the employee can avail leaves or time offs from this date itself. So you are restricting the employee should not go beyond this date. Or the employee cannot correct the leave of time, leave of balance or time of balance beyond this limit. After this date only they can take. So for this we can create constant date. Okay. Then uh, other one is constant date. Sorry, this other one. Okay, it's a constant value. Constant value calculation. So, uh, employee. Okay, let's take this statement. If employee complete five years of service, then the employee will get 15 days of vacation. Okay, this is conditional calculation. If employee completes five years of service, so if is condition, Five years again, you have to use some different calculation. But here, 15 days, 15 is constant value. Okay, 15 is constant value. So you have to create any, if you want to create any number from zero to any number, if you want to create a number, you can use constant value. So 15 days you want to show at worker level time off. So we have to create 15 days as a constant value. Okay. Then the other one is a difference calculation. So this is also quite common again to build it. So it returns the number of days. Months. 
yes but interval between two dates okay so uh, so day difference calculation will help you to identify the number of days months years but interval between two dates okay so, okay employee should get two days again i'm repeating same logic employee continuous yes greater than equal to three employee should get five days in fact they'll get more than this i'm just taking random numbers five years This is also one of the calculation called lookup calculation. First, we have to create a lookup table. Lookup table based on years of service. Also, be familiar with the short forms instead of writing years of service, continue years of service. So, we used to write like this okay, YYS, years of service, CYYS, continuous years of service. So we should be familiar with this terminology as well. Okay. So let's go on other calculations. Ninth one. Logic calculation. So one of my favorite. Normal payroll will use mostly. So the name itself is saying logic under combinations. The tenth one. Value comparison calculation. The name is of it saying comparison. Comparison. So it's like true or false conditions. Okay. Value comparison is compare true or false. You'll compare two values. And whichever is true, whatever you have uh, written in the statement, if it is true, then the employee will get time off. If it is false, then the employee is not going to get the time off. An example, an employee months of service greater than or equal to eight. Or employee high date month equal to July. If it is true, if the employee hired in the month of July is true, then the employee will get certain time off. Or the employee paid time of balance is greater than or equal to zero. So comparison, comparing and writing a written statement is true or false. So for that, we'll use value comparison calculations. Okay. Fine. See, uh, apart from this, we have three more calculations, date extract calculations, increment and decrement calculations, instance set count calculations that we'll discuss once we start a configuration. So I'm planning to hold for today. So tomorrow we'll start configuring time of plan. Okay, we'll create, we'll come with some simple requirement. Let's start building the time of plan. Okay, it's a simple requirement. We'll follow three ways. One is simple, another one is moderate, third one is more complex. Okay, we'll create these three. And setting up, creating time of plan is, is pretty straightforward and easy, but creating the logic, the calculations is complex one. It's a kind of hit and try until you'll get the result. Okay, so any questions so far uh, we discussed in these 10 calculations? So, uh, Kiran, this uh, conditional calculation, right? Yes. Um, you gave an example like if an exam, if an employee completes, um, one or two years of service, then this amount of days he'll he'll get uh, as a time off. Right? So, but in every case, we see that uh, you know if statement is being used, right? In every calculations. 
So is it like in every calculations will be Condition. using conditional calculation? No, no, no. Sometimes uh, straight forward calculations also will be there arithmetic. If that's what, if the conditional calculus demands your requirement, or you got a requirement where you have to choose the conditional calculation, then only we have to choose. It doesn't mean it's mandatorily we have to choose the conditional calculation, but often we will use conditional calculation as well. The most quite Quite widely used calculation among all these 10 is arithmetic. Arithmetic is the most widely used and constant value. Of course, conditional calculation as well. Based on the requirement we have to choose. Yeah. So for instance, let's say we saw five states in Australia. Okay, they said five states. So mm -hmm. five values, five different states we have to group and that we use. If A or if B, if C. So it remains conditional. Let's assume they're asking only one state. Then you can go with value uh, value set comparison as well. Condition also you can achieve. This also you can go. And calculation is a calculation within the calculation. Yeah. So is it okay if you can hold for today? Sure. Okay. So thanks, Ashish. Thanks, Vala. Thanks, Ashish. Take care. See you tomorrow in the same Thank time. You. Yeah. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you.